As we continue our study of chemistry, which of course is all that matters, we're going to look at the idea of problem solving and in chemistry we're going to use a process of problem solving which usually entails dimensional analysis. Now I borrowed this from a gentleman named Rafe Esquith who is an outstanding teacher in Los Angeles. Uh, he does a great job of educating students about how to learn. And I, uh, I like this list of how to solve a problem. And I think under step one it says to understand the problem, but the first thing it tells you is put the pencil down. How many of us start solving the problem before we truly understand what the problem is asking us to look for? So put the pencil down, read the question carefully. Collect all your relevant data, list the haves, your knowns, and list your unknowns, what you want. Now, once that's in place, then choose an appropriate strategy. How are you going to approach this? Is this something you need an equation for? Is this something you need to write out an answer for? Is this something you're going to need to gather other information? So, what is the strategy? Is it going to be something you're going to act out? Are you going to choose an operation to use? Are you going to draw a picture? Is this going to be something that you just guess and check? Maybe you're going to look for patterns. Do you need to make a chart or a table? Is there an organizational list that will help you? Is, your, is logic or backwards reasoning going to be important for this? Then pick up your pencil and start the solving process. Now, once you've solved the problem, the key that a lot of students miss out on is they don't look at their answer and say, does this answer make sense? If the answer doesn't make sense, then it's obviously not the answer. Think about the logic behind what that answer says and does it truly answer what the question was asking. So let's look at a couple of examples of what we call dimensional analysis. And dimensional analysis just is just a way of converting values between units. So in this case we're going to be asked how many yards are in 52 feet. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to begin with what you have. So we have 52 feet and we determine what we want. And in this case we're looking for how many yards? So what we're going to do is we're going to create some conversion factors and our conversion factors are based on the fact that one yard equals three feet. So our conversion factors are simply fractions that allow us to put the units where we want them so that we can cancel the units. Now whatever we're going to cancel is going to go on the bottom and whatever we're trying to get we're going to put on the top of the fraction. So in this case we could have a fraction of one yard equals three feet or we could use three feet equals one yard. Since we're converting from feet to yards, we're going to put the feet in the denominator when we actually do our calculation. So now we set up the math. So 52 feet times one yard over three feet, and what this allows us to do is because now the feet in the conversion factors is in the denominator, we can cancel out the feet as units. Once we've done that, we can cancel units and we end up with feet and feet canceling and when we do that we end up with an answer of 17 yards. We actually end up with 17.33 yards but because of significant digit rules we're going to round that to two digits because our original question only had two digits. So for our second problem we are going to change from seconds how many seconds are there in 3.25 days so what we're going to do here is we're going to set up our conversion factors just as we talked about before and that's basically going to look like this we're going to start with 3.25 days that's 24 hours for every one day we put one day in the denominator because that's the unit we're going to cancel we have 60 minutes in every hour because we need to cancel hours because our question is about finding seconds so that's why our last conversion factor is seconds over minutes, which allows us to cancel the unit for minutes. So now we're going to actually cancel our units, which would look something like this. 3.25 days cancels with day. 24 hours cancels with hour. 60 minutes cancels with one minute. And that leaves us with seconds as the only units remaining. Now anything in the numerator we're going to multiply. 
anything in the denominator we're going to lead, uh, divide by. In this case, all the denominators are 1. So this comes out to be 281,000 seconds. Um, again, we have rounded off to three digits, and those three digits coincide with the three digits in our original question following significant digit rules. So here we have another dimensional analysis problem, and why don't you take out a piece of paper why don't you pause the video for a moment, try to solve this on your own, and then come back and I'll walk you through the explanation and see how you did. So go ahead and turn off the video now. So welcome back. So let's take a look at how we did. So we're going to set up our conversion factors. So we're going to start with 2.5 yards and 3 feet equals 1 yard, so that's our first conversion factor. Our second conversion factor is inches, 12 inches is 1 foot, and lastly we can use 2.54 centimeters for every 1 inch. So hopefully that is what you have on your paper. So go ahead and cancel your units, which looks something like this, and let me go ahead and cancel the appropriate units for you. So yards cancel with yards, feet cancels with feet, inches cancels with inches, and we should end up with only centimeters as our final unit. Multiply all of the numerators, divide any denominators, and we end up with 228.6 centimeters. But our original question only had two significant digits, so we round that up to 230 centimeters following significant digit rules. So let's go ahead and look at one more example, and in this example we are looking at how many kilometers per hour is the velocity 8 meters per second. So here we're going to change meters to kilometers, but we're also going to change seconds to hours. So why don't you change? I'll turn off the video again on a separate sheet of paper. Why don't you try this problem on your own? and then come back and we'll go through it together and see how you did. So go ahead and turn off the video now. So here we are and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our conversion factors. So we're going to start with 8 meters over seconds, 8 meters per second, and then we're going to say that for every one kilometer we have a thousand meters. Again we're putting meters in the denominator to cancel with the meters and we want kilometers because that's what the question is asking for. There are 60 seconds in one minute. This will allow us to cancel seconds. Now notice since the seconds is in the denominator in the question, seconds is now at the top in order to cancel it so we can end up with minutes in the denominator. And then we're going to change those minutes to hours. Again we want hours in the denominator because it's kilometers per hour. So we're going to cancel our units, and when we do that, we're first going to cancel meters with meters. We're going to leave the kilometers as they are because that's what we want. We're now going to cancel seconds with seconds, and we're going to cancel minutes with minutes, and that will leave us with hours, which is what we're being asked to find. Kilometers are on top, hours on the bottom, kilometers per hour. Now we're going to calculate the answer, multiplying the numerators but dividing by the denominator. So it's going to be 8 times 60 times 60 divided by a thousand, which will give us an answer of 28.8 kilometers per hour. Um, since we only had one significant digit in the original question, we can only have one significant digit in our answer, so we would round off to 30 kilometers per hour.